Welcome to my welcome to my TED talk. Today we're going over what I would rank as the best seasons of My Hero Academia. <laughs> right, chat. Let's begin. Season one to season seven. It's very simple. We're just going to rank them on what I think were the best seasons and why. And because of that, season one will be easily going into an A tier. Season one was a strong season. It got everyone into the show. I think it did a very good job at build at like, um, you know, world building and also setting it up its characters. Season one was a lot longer than I remember. Um, and I feel like most of that is because there was a lot of nothing happening in season one. And that's why it's not quite S tier. There just wasn't a lot that was happening. It was very like introduction to the show. You know, kind of like just focusing on setting up the main character. And because of that, I don't think it was the strongest season in the world. However, the reason why I would put it all the way up in A tier is solely because of that first end fight with All Might and the Nomu. That fight alone made season one really good. Really good. That that entire back half of the season with the USJ arc is Oh, it's top notch. When I when I think about season one, I think about the USJ arc and I think about how far all the students in 1A has have come. And because of that, I think season one was a very, very strong season. I do think it is worthy of being A tier. Again, not quite S tier because there was just not a lot happening in season one. Uh, a lot just didn't happen apart from that USJ arc right at the end of the season. And that All Might and versus Nomu fight was legendary. Season two of My Hero, S tier easily s tier this was the this was the season that made season one it, it took season one and made it 10 times better immediately 10 times better not only did a lot of things happen in season two that's very important to the story the tournament arc is a very very memorable arc i remember sitting there and watching the todoroki versus deku fight and i think that was one of the best fights in the show uh, so solely for the just for the tournament arc, it's S tier. But then you also have on the back half of the season, the um, stain fight between Deku, Ida and Todoroki. And because of that, because it had very strong arcs all the way through, as well as really, really good plot points. I think season two is an S tier, easily, easily S tier. It's also obviously the season where Deku starts finally like learning how to use one for all properly. And it just made for a very, very, very cool season overall. Season three is going to be another Esther. Um, overall, season three was a pretty strong season. I, I, I think the back half of season three wasn't as strong. You know what? Actually, I might move it down to Ata because I think the back half of the season wasn't as strong as the first half. The first half of season three is Esther easily. Uh, that camp arc. Uh, the training camp arc, a very memorable arc again of the show. And also uh, you had the Deku versus Muscular fight, which was so freaking good. You also had All Might versus All For One fight, which was insanely good as well. I think season three is when like my heroes uh, started to get a bit more hype. I think season two got a bit more, got it a bit more hype, but also I think season three just like built on that. Uh, yeah, no season three, very strong season overall. A tier. If it was, if it had carried on the momentum throughout the entire show, it would have been S tier. But because, like I said, that back half of the season wasn't as strong as the first half of the season, it's probably going to be A tier. Season four is going to be our first B tier. I think season four was okay. The, but season four, there was, it was like season one when there was, where there just wasn't a lot happening, apart from the beginning of the C series with um, Overhaul. And it introduced Mirio, which is one of my favorite characters. But overall, I feel like just not a lot happened in season uh, four. And because of that, I don't think it was that. I don't think it was that great. Season four is my least memorable season out of them all. Again, the overhaul fight with Mirio versus Deku, uh, Mirio and Deku versus Overhaul, was very very good. But overall, I just don't remember much about the season four uh series i think it had gentle in as well i think this was the series with gentle uh gentle criminal and eh, he just wasn't that interesting uh, uh, of a villain for me personally i just think season four was a really weak season 
overall. I think season four was also the season where people started to like lose interest in the show. And because of that, I think it just wasn't nearly as good as season one, two or three. Um, yeah, it, it was just, it was just a whole lot of nothing really. Season five is, season five would be B tier. But I think solely for the uh, the Villain Academia arc at near the end of Season 5 and because it sets up the war, I think it's going to go in A tier. I think it's behind Season 1. But I think it I think it is worthy of A tier. I think it is worthy of A tier. I just think Season 5 was a very, very good series. A uh, very, very good season. Um, I'm trying to think of memorable moments that happened in Season 5. Obviously, you had Class 1A versus Class 1B. Eh, it was alright. It was alright. I think, obviously, people only really cared about uh, Todoroki, Bakugo, and Deku against Class 1B versus all of Class 1A versus Class 1B. I feel like people just don't really care. It's like only some of the matches that you look forward to, and it felt like it was dragging on a bit. Saying that, this was the first season where we started to see Deku use multiple quirks, so I think that redeemed it a little bit. And like I said, the, the villain side of the uh, series right on the back end of the series was really good. But again, I don't think it's S tier. And I don't think it's above season f one on one and three for me personally. I just think a lot didn't happen. Season six, S tier. S tier. Season six had so much happening all the time. You had the beginning of the war arc right at the beginning of the series amazing just seeing all that destruction and like an awakened shigaraki was really really cool you also got to see all these different heroes and their quirks just so so cool and the, the fights were so intense and so fun hawks versus um twice was really fun i mean it wasn't much of a fight but that was really cool to see you also had hawks and um Tokuyami, I think his name is, if I remember correctly. You had those two versus Dabi, which was a cool fight. You had the reveal that Dabi was actually Toya, um, Todoroki, which was a very cool reveal. Obviously, it was a it was a uh, it was a theory that people knew for a while, but when it finally got revealed, it felt so rewarding. And then. On the back half of the series, you had the Vigilante arc with Deku. Such a cool arc, bro. Such a cool arc. It was the first time that we actually... It felt like we had stakes in the show for the first time. Because every season before this just felt very... I feel like I feel like the first five seasons of My Hero Academia is focused on the academia part. It is very much happy-go-lucky. Just a bunch of um, students going and learning about their powers. And then season six is when it starts to get really dark and really uh, shows shows the stakes of the series, basically. And I, that's why I really like season six. Season six also is just one of the more memorable seasons for me. Like I said, the ones that I think about the most is season two and season six. I just think these two seasons are very, very good. And I think overall, they're just very strong series uh, seasons. And even then, you had the Deku versus Class 1A arc for like two episodes. And that was a very, very cool fight to see as well. I think season six just had a lot of memorable moments. And it was the first time when you were like, damn, Deku's actually kind of cool. <laughs> Rather than him being like the nerdy kid who cries a lot, he was he actually became a really, really cool protagonist for once. Season seven of My Hero, which is the most recent series uh, season, it's still not finished yet. So I can't really rank it properly. I think from the episodes that we've seen so far, though, A tier. I think it's A tier. <laughs> I, I, I like some of the some of the parts of season seven, but I also feel like it's also focusing on characters I don't care about all that much, to be honest. Like I am there at the end of the day just to see Shigaraki versus Deku and maybe even a bit of Bakugo because I thought that was cool. I thought the episode, the one of the more recent episodes with um, Todoroki taking down Toya was uh, a very, very cool episode. But then there was just some episodes that just felt a bit like sleeper episodes. Like, I didn't really care about Toga versus Uraraka. I'm gonna be honest. I just didn't really care. It was a very cool scene and very well animated. I just didn't really care to see it. 
and then there was um the the episode where i forgot his name it's it's the guy who can it's it's the friend of Eraserhead and uh present mike when he gets released from the hospital it's that episode where i think it's Coulter is um and octopod or whatever his name is is like doing you know their episode and focusing on their stories i just didn't care i'm gonna be honest i just didn't care i think because I, I i think i didn't care too much because they hadn't really focused on these characters before and it feels like now in season seven they're just focusing on all of the characters even more which is cool to see but i just don't care because they've never recently focused on them like in previous seasons so to now be focused on these characters when you just want to see Deku fight Shigaraki. I feel like it just doesn't matter really. Which is why so far Season 7 hasn't been super strong for me personally. Um, I think Season 7 obviously still, because it still has I think a couple more episodes left. I think Season 7 could possibly go into S tier. But ooh, those last couple episodes are going to be really, they're going to need to be really, really good. I will say though, uh, the most recent episode with Armored All Might versus uh, One For All that that's nearly pushing it to s tier that's why i'm like on the fence of whether i should have it in a tier or put it in s tier to be honest because i think i think season seven is pretty good but at the same time uh, there are there are just some moments that i did not care about in this se in this season and for that alone I, I just don't know if it can reach s tier i will say though um the star and stripe versus shigaraki fight is almost pushing it in eight and s tier as well i think the season season seven started off so strong and now it just feels like it's dragging out a bit like certain moments just because they want to obviously get that final season uh out of it without rushing the story also we don't have the movies the my hero academia movies here but if we did the first movie would go in a tier the second movie would go in s tier and the third movie would go in b tier I've not seen the fourth movie yet. I don't think it's out. Uh, but if anyone was interested in the movie rankings as well, that would that would be my movie rankings. But yeah, that's my that's my tier list on the My Hero Academia seasons. I imagine there's going to be a lot of disagreements on this, but personally, I feel like for me personally, the I've put in like the from the most memorable seasons down to the least memorable seasons, and that's kind of what I base my ranking off. But yeah, cool.